Hi. So in this video, we're going to have a look at some of the apparatus that we use in science. And in your booklet, there are 10 pieces of apparatus that we need to learn what the names are and how we draw them. Because whenever we're drawing diagrams of the apparatus we're using, it's not always possible to draw them what they actually look like. So you'll see around the edge here, this is what we use. We use like diagrams in science that show us what they look like and everybody knows to recognize them for each one. So I'm gonna run through some examples with you, show you what they look like in real life, tell you the name of them, and then the diagram that we use. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna have a little game to see how much you can remember out of the 10 of them. So we'll start off with one that's not actually um, on the list of 10 to learn, but it's really important. And this is your goggles. Now you can see I've really made a mess trying to draw it, but that's what they look like in a diagram. But they're really important for practicals, especially practicals. If we're using liquids, you have to have your goggles on. Okay, so let's start with the 10 in our booklet. So I'm not gonna, we'll do them maybe in the order that they're in your booklet. So the first one is this. So it's called a filter funnel, okay? And it's used for filtering or separating out mixtures. Um, whenever we're doing it in class, you maybe set it upside down on your paper towel. It's the best way to hold it. Um, and what happens is we put a filter paper inside it. I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna put it into that flask so you can see what it looks like. And then when you're actually separating your mixture out, you fold your filter paper up and it fits inside your cone like that so you can separate out your mixture. So this piece of apparatus is your filter funnel, okay? So that's what your filter funnel looks like. And there is how we do our diagram of it. Okay, and the name is filter funnel. Okay, so that's the first one. Okay, the next one then, you just had a glimpse off a minute ago. And this is what it looks like. Now, I always remember I turn it that way up and it reminds me of the name. It's called a conical flask because of the cone shape. And the diagram that we use for this is like that. So it's like a cross section view of the apparatus. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, okay, so number three is used to hold things during practical. So I take a step back and you can see the height of it. This is called a retort stand. Now at the minute we've got a boss head and a clamp on it because that's what we use to attach things to it. But if I remove that, oops, then we're left with just the retort stand, okay? It helps if we're heating things or we're holding things. It keeps it steady. It's got a big heavy base to keep it steady. So the diagram for the retort stand looks like that and the name. Okay, and you'll get, they come in different colors as well. Yours in your classroom might not necessarily be that color. Okay, so the next one in your booklet, the diagram looks like this. And in real life, it looks like this. So this is our Bunsen burner. Okay, and rather than trying to draw a Bunsen burner and diagram, all we have to do is write heat and an arrow. Now, the Bunsen burner I have at the minute comes with a safety mat. Okay, you shouldn't use your Bunsen burner unless you have a safety mat with it. But the heat and the arrow just represents your Bunsen burner. Okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot the name for the Bunsen burner. Right. The next one then, the diagram is for this. It's a tripod. Okay, so here's the difference for this in the, in the real life and the diagram. In real life, it has three legs. It's called a tripod. Your diagram, you'll see it has um, two legs in it. It's really so that whenever you're drawing it, because normally when you have a tripod, you have a Bunsen burner underneath it. So it means that you can fit the arrow and heat underneath that tripod area there when you're drawing it, okay? So that one is called a tripod. And that's what it is. It holds things on top of the Bunsen burner. So you can put it over the Bunsen burner and you can set things on top of it to heat it. Okay, the next one, again, I've got it inside another piece of apparatus. So this is inside, this is the apparatus you're looking at. Uh, the diagram for it looks like this, but this is a test tube and I've got it inside a test tube holder just because that's safer to hold it there whenever you're using it, you always, rather than have it sitting on the desk, you put it inside the test tube holder. Okay, next one then, this is your diagram, and this is what it looks like in real life, and it's called an evaporating basin. And I've lost my label for it. There's it there, evaporating basin, okay? So again, it's like a cross section of it, 
but I can add it sideways on. Okay, next one. So the next one, the diagram looks like this, but actually in real life, they come in all different sizes. And you probably know what these are. You probably used them maybe on a P6 yesterday or something, but these are beakers. So you can have small ones, medium ones, depending on how much liquid you need to hold. That's what your beaker looks like. Okay, and then the next one, we use this when we're using the tripod or we're setting something on the tripod and it's our gauze. So again, it's like a cross section of it. And the gauze's job is to help spread out the heat from the ones that burn evenly. So that if you have a beaker sitting on top of the gauze, that all of the bottom of the beaker gets heated evenly. Okay, and then our last one. So this is what the diagram looks like. This is a measuring cylinder. And again, these measuring cylinders come in all different shapes and sizes. And they all have a volume on it. You can see that one goes up to 50. This one goes up to 25. And this big one here goes up to 250. So depending on what size or how much liquid you want to measure, you'll use a different measuring cylinder for that job. Okay, if you're not sure, you can rewind that video and have a look again and see if you can understand or see if you can get the names and how the diagrams link to what the apparatus looked like in real life. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to look at that apparatus. You've watched the video, you filled it in your book. Now we're ready to test to see how well we've done. So I'm gonna run us through a list of apparatus and I want you to see if you can either pause the video or really quickly jot down the name and what the diagram looks like. I'll show you how the first one's going to work. Okay, so we've got a question mark at the minute. So at the minute you should be jotting down on a piece of paper or somewhere what the diagram is and what the name is. So for this one, did you write down that it was evaporating basin? And did you get the diagram to look something like that? Okay, got the idea of the game. So we've got nine more to go to see if you know them all. So this one, this is what we're looking at here. So can you write down the name or think of the, even think of the name and draw the diagram might be quicker. So name is test tube and the diagram. Did you get the diagram looking like that? Well done if you did. Okay, next one again, maybe just think of the name and then draw the diagram. It's really just more important that you learn what the diagrams look like. So what is this? It is a beaker and the diagram looks like that. Well done. Okay, so this one, number four. What is this? So think of the name and draw the diagram on a piece of paper. Okay, so the name is measuring cylinder and diagram. Maybe your diagrams will be a bit better than mine. <laughs> okay, so this one. Remember we said this is put on the tripod to help spread the heat evenly. See, it's got one side that's more dirty because it's the side that's normally at the Bunsen burner. So have you thought of the name and drawn the diagram? So the name is a gauze and the diagram just looks like a pile of X's going across the top. Okay, we are halfway through. Hopefully you're doing okay. So this one, what did we say the name for this one was? And can you think of the diagram? So, oops, filter funnel and the diagram looks like that. Okay, in this one, there was a special, do, the name was to do with the shape. Can you think of the name and can you draw the diagram? So it is a conical flask and the diagram looks like that. Okay, we've only three left to go. So what did we say this was? Can you remember what was different about how it looked in real life and how it looked in the diagram? Can you get the diagram right for this one? So it is a tripod because it's three legs, but in the diagram, it only has two. Well done if you remember that. Okay, so the next one, I don't have my safety mat with it, but this is just a piece of apparatus that we have to draw the diagram for. What's it called? And how do we draw the diagram for it? How is this diagram different than the rest? So it's a Bunsen burner and the diagram is just the word heat with an arrow. Well done, we have only one left to go. So remember I said this comes in different colors. It just depends your science teacher's room, which one they have. So there we go. That's a full view of it. What was it called and what was its diagram? So did you get that it was your torch stand? And the diagram looks like that. Well done, if you've got all 10 of those, well done. Okay, so in your booklet, it asks you this question. Do I get a diagram to show how a beaker of water would be heated on a tripod over a Bunsen burner? So I've got the apparatus here that we need. I'm gonna show you what it looks like in real life. 
and see if you can add all of those diagrams that we've learnt together. So we'll put the tripod there on the safety mat. We'll put the gauze on top of the tripod. We'll put the Bunsen burner underneath. Remember I said that was the reason why the tripod only had two legs, so that we could put the Bunsen burner underneath and the beaker of water on top. So that's what those that's what it looks like. Can you draw it in diagram form? And then be able to show your teacher when you have it drawn.